Hi, my name is Bella Webb. I graduated from UCL History in 2018 and went on to do a Master's in Fashion Journalism at Central St Martins the following year. I now work as an Editorial Associate at Vogue Business, writing about the intersection of fashion, social responsibility and sustainability from a business perspective. I started my job two weeks into lockdown last year, so I've had some pretty surreal experiences working from home including moderating a panel for 10,000 people at the digital trade show Premier Vision, interviewing Tommy Hilfiger about adaptive fashion, and uh, hosting a panel discussion with Patagonia's Director of Philosophy for the inaugural Vogue Business and Google Summit. I've wanted to be a journalist since I was 12 or 13, and fashion was just the industry that I was most interested in. I think what's interesting is that um, in most industries, the role of a journalist is to seek truth and hold people accountable. Whereas in fashion, um, the role of a journalist has historically been to act almost as an extension of PR and to kind of uphold business as usual and encourage hyper-consumption. The more I learned about sustainability and the climate crisis, the less comfortable I felt with that um, and the more I wanted to challenge it. So. After I graduated from Central St. Martins, I was actually invited back to be an associate lecturer um, on the fashion communication course, which covers fashion journalism, fashion image, and fashion critical studies, which is kind of like fashion history. Um, and part of my role there is to deliver lectures on sustainability, help improve sustainable literacy among students, and also um, over the last year, I've developed a manifesto for sustainable fashion communication which acts as a set of guiding principles for a more ethical and responsible form of fashion journalism. Like a lot of young writers, I had a blog when I was at university, so I would write reviews of um, theatre performances, ballets, restaurants even, and as much as I cringe at some of the things that I wrote now, um, it was really helpful to help kind of build out my portfolio and it meant that I had something to show people when I went to interviews um, for internships and things. And when I was 17, I won a writing competition uh, run by a platform in the north of England called Northern Soul. And off the back of that, I had a column writing every month about my experiences as a Northern student in London. That was called Chips and Gravy. And I wrote that all the way through my time at UCL. Um, I think one of the brilliant things about being in London though as a student is that you get access to all of these publications and communities that you maybe wouldn't otherwise. So one of the things I did in second year was I worked as features director for an independent feminist magazine called Roundtable Journal. And then in third year I was president of UCL's arts and culture magazine Savage Journal. So that year we produced two print editions called uh, Intersect and Territories. And we also started a segment called Our Voices, where students could um, anonymously share their experiences of discrimination. And one of the things um, about Savage was that it gave me a platform to kind of forge relationships with people that I wanted to work for. So one of the things we did was a panel discussion about breaking into the creative industries and I invited the fashion director of Tank magazine to take part and we published it on Savage's YouTube channel and off the back of that I got an internship at Tank magazine which I did between my BA and my MA. While I was a student I went to as many events as I could um, around sustainable fashion, trying to build a network, forge relationships with people and um, understand the industry as best as I could. And off the back of that, I got freelance bylines in ID, another um, fashion revolution. I also got a position working as online editor of an independent magazine called One Granary. And I did commercial projects for um, the underwear brand Sloggy and also for L'Oreal. But I think it's worth saying that none of that would have been possible if I didn't have financial support from my parents. And a lot of internships and opportunities when you're kind of starting out in fashion journalism are unpaid. 
which is a massive problem because obviously it means that the only people who can afford to get a foot in the door are the people who do have that financial support. Um, it's one of the reasons that journalism is historically populated by people who are white, middle class and privately educated. But there are a lot of um, mentoring programmes and kind of support initiatives that exist now, which I think are really helpful and definitely worth exploring if you're interested in journalism. So there's one called Presspad, which helps people with accommodation in London while they intern. There are also um, schemes like Mentoring Matters, in-agency, room mentoring. And they're really great opportunities that um, are primarily catered to people who have been historically underrepresented in journalism. Historians and journalists have a lot in common and UCL taught me many things that I use in my everyday life and work. It taught me how to write succinctly, how to meet a deadline and how to research thoroughly. But I think the most important thing that I learned from studying history was how to write with empathy. A lot of what I write about now is um, reporting on underrepresented experiences or communities, be it neurodiversity or adaptive fashion. And I think it's really important that you acknowledge how your personal context as a writer influences which stories you think are worth telling, but also how you tell them. If I could give you any advice for studying history at UCL, it would just be to make the most of your three years because it will go so quickly. But being in London, you are surrounded by diverse communities and cultures and museums. Um, there is so much to experience. So just make the best of it. Squeeze as much as you can into those three years. And it's okay if they're not the best three years of your life.